Welcome back to the Eternal Sith Network where you get all your Star Wars news. Guys, we finally have it. The Bad Batch Season 2 Episodes 1 and 2 are here and we're going to be going into it today and going into a little deep dive into it as it was so, so good. But without further ado, remember, hit the subscribe, like, and notification bell so you're always in the know on everything Star Wars. And once you're done watching this video, go check out my last video that I did talk about. I put out two videos yesterday. You might want to check them out. They're pretty good. One's on the Ahsoka series, and the other one is on the Bad Batch and its ties to the Mandalorian. So remember, go give those two videos a thumbs up as you watch. Let's start the show. Right off the rip, we got it just as the trailer did show. We were going to get it. That water planet, we get to see kind of like them running in as they're possibly stealing, I would say, some credits. And we see Wrecker. We see the whole team. And we get to see Omega. We see an older Omega as she's there studying. And it seems like they really have... She looks a lot more mature. She looks definitely well more developed in it there, as you see here. And we get to see her use her energy bow, which is super exciting because she looks a lot more confident with that bow as in season one. Again, it was just her first time using it. She wasn't really well prepared for it, but you can tell she's definitely had much training with that energy bow. Now, it goes back to Ord Mantel, and it looks a little bit different. I don't know why, but it looks different than season one. But again, we go back to Ord Mantel, which is the home planet and where Crimson Dawn did start, but we never took advantage of that, meaning Star Wars, to talk a, a little bit deeper on it. But again, we're back to Ord Mantel, where they usually get their jobs from Sid. And here we get to see them go back and have a conversation with her. They do see her. So we see all of them, the whole crew looking a lot more mature. And you can tell their armor looks a little bit more different than the first season. So we see here Sid with this new character as they are talking about a new potential job that could, you know, score something big for them as they can definitely, you know, leave or be free from basically getting any more jobs and returning back to Ornament's Hell. And it ends up being that they find out about this job that is actually on the planet Serenio, where Count Dooku is, and they want to actually steal his war chest, where he has a bunch of credits from things that he's stolen, not just from his home planet, but from other planets as well that, you know, either he's taken over from back then during the Clone Wars, just overall, all the stuff that he's basically gathered that is just up for the grabs. So we see here, you know, Hunter and Echo going back and forth, you know, in a sense of why this is important and why they shouldn't do it because you hear echo talk about how they wouldn't have been in this mess if it hadn't been for them saving omega so that's one that you know she unfortunately she did hear it she overheard the two of them and that's why you see later on she does become very invested in these credits or this war chest to try to take now again here you get the image of serenio where they go back and we saw this in the trailer, so it wasn't anything new. We, we've seen this image before here. And we do get to see the clone troopers a little bit in this episode. Well, you get to see them throughout the whole episode as they're going up against the Bad Batch, Clone Force 99, as they end up splitting up because it actually ends up being that Omega, Echo, and Tech get actually stuck in one of the crate ships where Count Dooku's war chest is so that's an interesting one where we get to see them split up and it ends up being Hunter and Wrecker. So we do see that happening throughout the episode. And at the very end of episode one, we see, yes, that crate ship actually fall out as they actually project it. So that way, because again, they did have escape pods, but the clone troopers actually let them go. So that way they couldn't escape, but they ended up finding out that they could you know, they can eject the actual crates. So that's where you see them falling down here. And that's at the end of episode one. Now, episode two, which ends up being called Ruins of War, takes basically place right after episode one. And you see here, after they do land, it ends up being that, yes, Tech ends up getting hurt by one of the crates in the crate ship. And it kind of reminds you of um, Andor season uh, one with the episode of during the garrison when the guy actually dies after it actually falls on him but it didn't it didn't, it didn't kill tech it just basically he got a fractured leg so that was interesting to see but then we see this old man called remo or ren renmo we didn't get really get his name 
Um, but we see Omega kind of pull up on him, which I really enjoyed that as he was sneaking around because he saw them. And he ends up being a survivor from the planet Serenio, who, you know, knew Dooku once probably at some point in time. And I like how Omega is so confident with that energy. But like I said, you could tell she's definitely had training. She's a lot more confident this time around. You know, she really is a part of Clone Force 99. You really get that feeling, you know, with them. But then you see here the clone troopers as they are looking for them still in episode yes two because again they did split up and they know that the clones do know that they obviously split up because they end up finding the they end up finding them all but not that they take them in or anything like that. But in their find it ends up being that Hunter and Wrecker end up finding an armored assault tank from the Separatists back in the Clone Wars. So I thought that was pretty a nice little nudge to that. That was pretty dope to see that. And then we see Omega get this little toy piece. It's like a kaleidoscope, but you know, she asks if, if, it, if it's worth anything basically. And he says it's a toy, but I have a feeling that it's going to play a big part. I don't know. It, it might just be something interesting that ends up being worth something at the very end of everything. But who knows? We'll see what happens with that kaleidoscope. But keep it in mind. Don't let it go to waste. There's a reason why it's there. They don't just put anything in Star Wars for nothing. But then we see, yes, again, back to the armored assault tank. From the separatists we see that you know wrecker and hunter are trying to get it started so that way they can take down the clones because they are in some bit of trouble but then right after we see omega go back yes as echo basically the whole episode was telling her to forget the war chest but again omega with such a good warm heart she wanted to go back and get it so she could free her brothers because she felt bad after hearing what echo said back in episode one you know, with Hunter saying how if it wasn't for her, they wouldn't be in this pickle. But again, Echo then, you know, ends up telling her to leave it, leave it behind. Don't worry about it. And it was nice. He actually, you know, said, you know, a couple, he, he said some nice words and saying, you know, if he could do it all again, you know, he would still, you know, save her and it was worth it, you know, and I thought that was really, really nice. But then at the very end, you know, as we know that obviously Clone Force 99 gets away, we end up seeing Captain Wilco is his name, this clone trooper here with, yes, Admiral Rampart. And they're talking and it ends up being that, again, they obviously have to put it in that they came across Clone Force 99. But it ended up being that, according to the Empire, they are actually dead. They're no longer alive. So Rampart is actually in some heat because he doesn't want Tarkin to know. Now, when he tells that to the clone commander, Wilco, he says he can't do that because he tells him basically forget it. And, you know, he'll come up with a different report. Wilco says no. You know, obviously, clones have to follow orders. And you see here, Rampart comes out with a blaster and blasts him. And I thought that was really dark because it kind of reminded me of uh, season one of Andor. When you see Andor shoot down the two security uh, guards at, in the first episode. So I was like, damn, this is pretty dark. This is pretty dark for a, you know, first uh, season overall or I would, uh, for an episode. I was like, damn, talk about, you know, Clone Wars or Bad Batch not being dark. This is pretty dark, guys. But overall, I really enjoyed the first two episodes. I have to say they did a really good job. The pace of the show was amazing. Um, I love how you see the growth and development of Omega and you see again all of them the one thing that stood out to me was echo and hunter how they had their conflict i wonder if at any point in time they've talked about how echo's supposed to kind of like shy away from the from clone force 99 so i wonder if at any point in time that will happen we saw a little bit of that in season one but i'm i'm assuming that it's at some point in season two maybe echo does walk away from them but again, that's all speculation. Who knows? But again, overall, a great first two episodes, I have to say. The pacing, like I said, was very well done. The action, I love it. I, if I can have more shows like this, I'd be so happy. And again, for those of you who know me, it's not, you know, I do love my lightsabers. But if Android just could have been like this, I would love it. Again, I know you guys. I'm not, And again, overall, look, I'm just going to say this. Bad Batch is taking it away because season one for me for the bad batch really didn't hit as well but so far i really enjoy these first two episodes they're really good i'm hoping to get more like this where it's just action and it's just non-stop and it keeps you on your feet keeps you going and overall it succeeded i give these both episodes a 10 out of 10 but comment down below let me know what you thought about the episodes and the breakdown today guys remember for more star wars content hit the subscribe like and notification bell so you're always in the know on everything stars as i have another video out tomorrow and remember the eternal sith then now forever later guys